Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one ritzel at a time. And if you don't know this, you haven't picked up on it, my man Dion from Dion Talk actually served in Desert Storm. And I thought, who better to talk to of all my experts, given what is happening with Russia and Ukraine, than someone who actually served his country uh, in a conflict. Not saying it's similar, but it's the closest thing I have. And uh, I just want to, A, thank him for his service, talk about what he experienced during that, and then step back and let's talk about consumers, because that really is what my channel is about, consumer and cost of capital. So let's welcome Dion to the show. How you doing, buddy? Howdy. Doing great. Ready for round one, even though it's a tough topic. Yeah. It's, it's you know, first and foremost, our thoughts and prayers are going out for the folks in the Ukraine and also in Russia, right? Uh, near as I can tell, uh, 60 or 70 percent of Russian citizens did not want this to happen. Uh, so again, uh, not a pleasant topic, but something that is happening right now and, and we should be talking about. So Desert Storm, right? You were serving, as I recall, you were a Marine. Uh, what was what was it like kind of before you were called up or whatever the right vocabulary is? What was going on in the world? Do you remember? Were you in basic training or what was going on? So anytime you look at a military campaign or, or what you call a war, you know, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, I, you know, all of the operations that we've ran, they're unique. They're in they're in jungle environment. And, you know, one of the reasons why General Schwarzkopf became so, you know, so known is because he predicted the next event will be a desert environment right and so desert storm happens so they're all so different they only really have one thing in common and it's going to be the same thing that we see this time mm. nobody knows what the frick is going to happen yeah. period you just don't um i was in the marines i just spent about a year in okinawa came back and when you come back from a year deployment they, they tell you you're not going to deploy for it, it's, it's at least depending on the branch of service six months a year two years whatever and two days later pack your bags you're heading mm. to Saudi Arabia. Wow. Before Desert Storm, we had Desert Shield, which staged in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. for months because nobody knew what was going to happen. And when there's doubt, like now, nobody knows what's going to happen. We're going to have people saying possibly World War III. Um, how is this going to affect the United States? It's, it's not impacting like Desert Storm did. The main reason the military was involved from the United States is because we have basically a contract with oil producing countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, saying if somebody wants to buy oil from that country, they have to first buy American currency, United, United States currency, mm -hmm. to purchase the oil. Mm -hmm. So we have a petrol dollar. Right. To keep the strength of the dollar, we were involved in that. And right now with Russia and Ukraine, we don't have that arrangement. So we technically, based on the same thing, shouldn't be involved. No one knows what's going to happen that could make us be involved. And yeah, so there's that's... a lot of doubt. Yeah, let's talk about that again, because again, nobody knows, right? Um, I mean, I mean, there's lots of ways you can you can rat hole on this. Like one of the things that certainly seems to be happening is th this war may be fought in cyberspace first and worst and all of that. And uh, you know, you don't have to go back very far to realize that a cyber attack is not something that traditionally stays in country. It is something that typically spreads, and there have been Russian malware uh, that may have started in a location that quickly spread throughout the world. So this, this event, I mean, not to, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm just trying to put reality out there. Could, could, could be happening right now a lot more aggressively in cyberspace. Uh, and that's saying, and that's even saying that with missiles being fired and, and, and unfortunately probably tragic death and, and harm, but that th we don't know. I think, um, I think you're right. We just don't know. So you've got a lot of areas where there are military bases and, and a real estate investor. It's one of the economic drivers that a lot of us look at. You know, we're mm -hmm. looking for a base, a port, a college, a hospital, but the base is, is a factor of it. And when there's a big deployment mm -hmm. or an, an expected deployment, people pull back from doing transactions. And yeah, I think yeah. that's it. So we've got a lot of different factors hitting at the same time. Rates are increasing. So you have fear of missing out where people are trying to get transactions done. Mm -hmm. But Mortgages drop because refinancing looks a lot less attractive now. So lenders become more aggressive and they start saying things like, you and Matt, the mortgage guy, I, I want, like, I'm going to listen to that video a few times because so the way that Matt formulated, here's the predatory tactics a lender could use and the red flags to look out for that people who don't watch this content are probably going to fall for. 
Yeah, they are. You have a 19% credit card. Yeah. You can get that down to a 4% on a mortgage. Sounds great. Let's stretch two to three years of payments out to 30 years and see uh, how much interest you're actually going to pay. Um, concepts that since I don't do bad debt, I've, mm -hmm. I've never had to think about, but I can under, I completely understand a new a newer investor or a person with equity in their house thinking, I can get rid of 19% interest. Mm -hmm. This is brilliant. And that's, that's bad. Yeah. Not good. What I re what I remember about Desert Storm because my wife's family, uh, my wife's so it would have been my father in law, and two brother in laws, uh, were reservists, and the father in law was deployed to uh, Saudi Arabia, and then ultimately Iraq for like a year and a half or fifteen months or something. And what I remember th about that time is the consumer was scared. And what that means to me is not only do we see the reaction that we see in the stock market and crypto today, where you kind of sell first and ask questions later, but we did go on a, we, we, we went on a, I don't know if conservation is the right word, but we certainly stopped discretionary spending. We didn't stop living, right? We still, we still ate, we still worked, we still, but we, we were not taking big vacations. We, everything, everything got kind of smaller and, uh, you know that that you know that could happen again. I think, but again, who knows? So, how many billionaires right now are predicting a massive crash in the stock market? Yeah, most of them. <laughs> right. So, so the average person could be pulling money out of the stock market and needs a place to put it, mm -hmm. creating more demand for real estate, which we already have enough of. Yeah. The problem the problem isn't demand. The problem is supply. There's just not enough supply. We're still under a million listings. Yeah, eight, eight something. Yeah, eight seven. It was eight sixty the last time I looked, and yeah. and that's what's funny to me is a lot of people that say real estate is not a safe investment because population growth is growth <laughs> is getting smaller. Yeah, we have record low inventory, so it doesn't matter if population was only growing by one person a year. We still have record low. Yeah. If it was increasing at a even slower rate than population, that would be less concerning. But right. it's literally the lowest it's been in decades. Population hasn't gone down for decades. And we have record occupancy, right? There in, in apartments, class A and class B specifically, it is very uh, normal to say 95 to 96% occupancy. The last reports I saw was 98.1%. So again, I don't know what these people are talking about. No, and then you're going to have the... I know a couple of day traders who are obviously smarter than <laughs> every other trader out there. Of course. And they say things like, well, I'm going to invest in DOD contract companies because war is profitable. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, have they looked historically how those companies perform? Because it's just like Peloton. Hey, there's a pandemic. Nobody can go to the gym. Everybody needs to bring a bike home. So Peloton does amazing. What happens a year later? Yeah. So if you, if you time it right, great. Yeah. But you know, I don't even have my crystal ball at work with me today. So I can't know when the timing right is going to be. Yeah. The big thing that I think about, because again, we're basically buy and hold one rental at a time, folks, is I, I always ask myself two simple questions. Does anybody bought, stop buying or does anybody sell because of what happened in the last 24 hours? So there could be some people that don't buy, right? If you were a um, investor who was relying on the stock market and you just saw your portfolio take a 10% haircut, you may back out, but I don't think that's most people. And then more importantly, what are we suffering today? Because again, if you back out, somebody else will jump in. So that's not really a problem. Will anybody sell? The answer is absolutely not. You are not selling a piece of real estate that cash flows today because of what happened. In fact, you probably, people again, retreat. They keep what they have. It's just, those are the questions I always ask myself. Well, when it comes to stocks, most people talk about catching a falling knife when, mm -hmm. when stocks start to go, but there's really two aspects of it. When you have stocks and you see it start to dip, some people think I need to sell before it loses all value, especially if they bought in at a lower, so they still have some technical profit in there. Mm -hmm. And the other people are, when do you start buying? So if there's a reason why stocks go down, there are some people who sell for fear. And then there's some people who are trying to catch trying to buy it, you know, best way is dollar cost averaging, of course, then you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're consistently perform the best. But now you add the doubt of war. Mm -hmm. And so when the stocks start to drop, some people may sell for that fear, 
but hardly anybody's going to be jumping in trying to buy yeah. because no one knows how far down the push is going to go from war. Yeah, exactly. With real estate, here's the real risk. You've mentioned this before. I think it gets amplified when there's war going on. If you buy a cash flowing property with current market rents or just below to give yourself a pad and you can make money, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Rents can drop some and you'd be fine. The syndications that are buying today projecting 5% increase for the next four years so that our exit strategy in five years will have seen a 25% rent increase for us to get out with the NOI that we need. The doubt of war might not cause rents to go down, but it, it's probably going to plateau them. I don't think a lot of changes are going to be happening to rent for at least a year, if not mm -hmm. more. So those are the people I think that are going to run into some serious problems because yeah. projected rent increases, just because we've seen two years of the biggest rent increases I've ever experienced, mm -hmm, me too. doesn't mean they're going to continue. I agree with that 100%. The one, the one uh, thing that I do think retreats today are syndications. There are syndications always going on. It, it's called capital raises. I think there are some syndications that had solid commitments that have yet to close that are seeing people pull money. Like I know I was going to give you a hundred grand for that apartment in Texas. Sorry, I'm going to keep it. Uh, I, I just don't feel, I just don't feel good. So there are a lot of people who thought they had deals done or capital raises that need to go back and try to raise some more money. And I think some of those just don't happen because when people get nervous, they conserve cash. A lot of times they conserve cash because they're nervous. And then other people are literally, and this is a bad pun to use, but they're trying to build that war chest. Yeah. They, yeah. they want the tinder of, yeah, um, to be ready. Yeah. People have been predicting a crash since 2013 when home prices finally went up above where they were in 2008 in most markets. And so since then, they've been saying prices are too high. It has to crash. It has to correct. Don't buy now. Wait for it. Well, now they actually have the word war to include in that clickbait video that they make about here's why the crash is going to come mm -hmm. to make more people pause, which means more banking of capital, okay. which we still have a bet going mm -hmm. of interest rates are going up. The Fed has announced interest rates are going up. I am scripting a video on um, why rates are going to come back down. Mm -hmm. Because even if, because, and I'm trying to think of how I worded it because my memory sucks. It's written down really well. Mm -hmm. But normally we can increase interest rates to curb inflation because the, the cause of inflation was cheap money. People right, could right. borrow money to grow the economy, which is what the Fed wants. Mm -hmm. But when it, inflation goes too, too fast, we raise rates to slow it down. Mm -hmm. For the last two years, cheap money hasn't been the problem. It's been free money. Yes. We're printing $120 billion a year, a, a month, not a year, a, a month, month, to just inject into the market. Stimulus, unemployment, extended unemployment, extra unemployment. Mm -hmm. People in Washington State were making $75,000 a year to sit at home on unemployment. We just had free money. People could spend money and money would come in next month, even if you weren't working. Yeah. Employers had to bribe people to come back to work. Yep. McDonald's said, hey, we'll give you $50 if you show up at the interview, just to yeah. come to the interview. The interview. Chick-fil-A Chick -fil was starting people at $18 an hour in some markets. So without legislature turning the minimum wage into $15 an hour, it's become $15 an hour to get people to come back to work, which caused the price increases. Higher rates is not going to curb that. Mm. I actually have the solution, which I'll say in my video. Nice. It's unpopular and it's never going to happen, but it's the one thing that would actually stop inflation in its tracks. Well, I look forward to watching that video later. Where can people find that video? What is the channel? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And I do live streams every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Very cool. Thanks, buddy.